Here is a Grant Fian Forest Heater. And unlike some of the other ones that I've shown before, this one does in fact have a fan in it, but some of them do not. I powered this on very briefly before and I noticed there is a problem that we need to repair before it's run for any more than a couple of seconds. The element that starts uh, on the right side in the front here has kind of a kink in it there and it's very loose and once it heats up it starts to fall back and it gets very very close to the other element just behind it and I'm not comfortable running it like that because it may short out and then we're going to have a problem. Although I suppose it wouldn't be that difficult to find an element to replace this but I don't want to deal with that. So um, let's see if I can correct that before it happens. Uh, this is got a lot of screws in there and it's not particularly obvious how it comes apart. I'm going to start with these two screws at the bottom Let's see uh, where we go from there. Well, that's not releasing everything, but that may be enough. I can just get this uh, guard to slide off of there. Hmm. The knob is on there awfully tight. Okay, that's not going to be enough to release it, so we'll have to start going to the back. Something tells me at some point the whole thing's just going to fall apart and be a nightmare to put back together by undoing these screws, but I don't think we have much choice. That just released something that was under pressure. Okay, this is probably going to be a very long video at this point. Alright, this screw did not come out easy. kind of falling apart now and the knob is not wishing to come off of this thing here which is very frustrating because it needs to I don't understand why it's not Okay, so undoing those screws did not do any good. I think the problem was it needed to come up. That might have been the issue.
Alright, there we go. Now we are within the unit. And as I predicted, the removal of those screws caused a total freak show inside. I'm just going to put these back in there for now. Actually, I suppose it would make sense to put a couple drops of oil into the fan while we're in the unit. Huh, looks like there may have been some hackery done in here at some point. The uh, mains line is all just taped together. It's kind of odd. It doesn't seem like this has any even hours on it. like that at all. You have to redo that. It's always good to, to check this stuff, you know, when you get it used. Oh, the fan doesn't even need to be serviced. In fact, this fan is probably easily replaced with like a one of those cheap bathroom motors or something. I wish I put a couple drops of oil in there anyway, so. Alright, so this is the problem here. This this just has too much additional slack to it. Um, yeah, compared to the rest of them, this is definitely not quite right. What I may be able to do is you be able to loosen this up a little bit. Just turn that like that. And this one. Oh, shit. Well, that may be good enough. It's still, it's still kind of loose, but with that one kind of going back like that, maybe okay. And wiring is super flaky. That definitely has to get redone. Well, let's plug it up and see what transpires. The cord feels like it's the original cord. It's got something on there that's very like, sticky and oily, which is not really correct. So this is going to be our problem area right there. Let's see what happens. It's on, and it looks like everything is okay so far. Power draw is reasonable at 12.3 amps. The fan is running, I can feel it. And um, it's not working properly over there. Well, actually, I shouldn't just say that. It is folded twice on itself. At the initial uh, bend there. I don't know if you can see it from this angle. Let's see. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but and you can see right there. See, it's it's twice thickness right at the beginning, and then it it lessens to uh, to just one piece right there. So that's why it's not glowing right at the beginning. But those two elements are staying far away from each other. Holy mackerel, this thing is throwing out the heat. I think this is even better than that Lakewood heater. Well, that looks good. Everything seems to be just fine. So that may have solved it. Off it. I want to run it for too long and it gets hot. Okay, so that's good. Uh, that's fixed. Now we're going to have to, there you can't work on it, um, 
when this cools off, we're going to have to do something about the wiring because the wiring is super flaky and I just don't like the way it is. It's not really correct. So I'll let this cool off for a while then we'll try to take a closer look inside. Okay, the machine is cooled off enough to handle it now. So there is a one of those strain relief things holding the cord and I really don't like those and I wish they wouldn't use them but so many things use them. They're just very difficult to work with. So what I want to do first is I want to take this apart and let's see what what's dwelling underneath here. I really hope there is some kind of connection here. Um, there is, well, I mean there kind of is, I guess. I don't like that though. Rather there just be a wire nut. tape has certainly lost most of its stickiness over the years. Alright, so I think what we're going to do is I'm going to remove those things and replace them with typical wire nuts. Because I just don't really like the way this is. And they're also joining aluminium wire from here with copper wire on the on the cord, which is I don't really know why that's not supposed to be done, but I know it's not supposed to be done. This is pretty cheap aluminium wire coming out of the motor. And this is pretty cheap aluminium wire coming off of the fan. Oddly enough, we have a copper lead to the switch. So, actually this whole thing is pretty cheap. You notice here, the, the, there's not even a connector used. It's just that singular strand of aluminium wire hooked around the bolt. Looks like here a, a connector is, is used. So it's, it's almost as if this was designed to be polarized having all the high side come in on copper and then the return or the common is on is on aluminium but it's not a polarized unit so I don't know it's kind of a weird a weird design I think what I will do is I'm going to make a notation on the plug of which side is the high side and just be sure to plug it in that way every time I use it because I really think that that's how it's supposed to be this wire does not have any identification on it it does have writing on one side Okay, so we were to plug it in like this, that would put the right side as the high side, which means this here should be the high side on the right. Yeah. Okay. So then what we'll do is let's connect this on the right side. It's got some oxidation on the outside there, but the strands themselves look okay. 
This is super difficult to work with in here. There's pretty much no slack. Really don't want to try to take that thing out of there because they're a pain to get out. But I think I'm just gonna have to push that thing out of there because I can't I can't get a good angle on this. It's gonna be impossible. So now that we have that out, let's just to make something that's more easy to do. Let's say the side with the writing on it is the high side. So I'll trace it down like this. So we'll say that this side, this will be the high side. Supposedly a 16 gauge wire. The insulation is very thick. wire is not really great. It's very dirty. I guess it's just the outside coating. Problem is that's what we're making the connection to. So it's not really going to be making a good connection if it's like that. This is not too bad. It's definitely not. It's definitely not great. You can see the difference in the in the connection quality. Uh, you know what? Let's let's go back a little bit further and see if see if it gets cleaner. This is just it's dealing with a lot of current, so I would kind of like the connection to be good. Um, Not really, it's pretty much the same. Hmm, I wonder if we should just replace the cord in this. Go back another few inches and see if it gets any better. like that all the way through. Well that's not too bad. We'll kind of fudge it like that. And grab some wire nuts. I have to see how it operates. If it seems like the cord is heating up, then I'll have to replace it.
Yeah, it's really just the outside a couple of strands that are kind of tarnished. That's not too bad. really don't like the use of the aluminium wire. That could be another thing to replace too if I find that this is running kind of hot. If the cord's heating up I could replace this aluminium lead with uh, like a copper, you know, just a piece of Romex or something. Alright, so that's, that's that. Um, while this is opened up, I guess it would make sense to go in there and take a look at the fan and just put some a couple drops of oil into the bearings. Even though it is it is running pretty freely, it doesn't hurt to put some in there preventatively. Looks like there's going to be two more screws on the bottom that have to come out in order to release the fan. I should have left this. Oh, that never was disconnected. Yep, you got two more screws down at the bottom there. Oh, goof. I forgot to connect the fan. Tusk. So this should connect to the low, how would that connect, um, let's see we have, we have the high side coming in, high side goes to here, and then the high is here. So that means this should go to the low side, which would be over here. This is some flaky wire that's on here. be like a cloth kind of wire. Okay, so the motor, I don't know if it has oil ports or not, this is kind of crooked on there. It's a very cheap fan. This whole heater is very cheap, but at least because it's old, it works good even though it's kind of cheap. No oil ports on these bearings, which is pretty typical of uh, these cheaper motors. And this has got one of those stupid things on there. It's going to be a thrill and a half to take that off. So I think what I'm going to do for now, especially since it's already pretty free, is I'm just going to put some oil in there 
like this, which is not thorough, but it'll at least, it's better than nothing. It's running very freely. It's good. All right, that's going to be good enough for that. It goes on the inside. Yeah, it goes there. Keep the screws in from the back here, and then we'll reconnect the fee in. And these are all just kind of chinty self-tapping screws, so none of this is proper uh, properly threaded machine screws or anything like that. So these don't go in super easy. bottom which are actually lining up pretty nicely Looks like this switch has a tip over thing on there. It's kind of cool. It's a very simple mechanical mechanism. You know, if, if the thing went backwards or went forwards, the weights will move it. And when it moves, it, it just pushes the uh, the piece forward and, and breaks the contact. Very simple, 
effective design. They're brilliant, really. Okay. So now, um, I'm going to put that strain relief back on. Strain relief. There we go. So it would go on. It goes on from the outside, which is kind of odd. I guess that makes sense. So I have to put this almost all the way back in and pull the cord through most of the way. And I really don't like how much these pinch the wire. It just it doesn't seem like a good idea to me, but... It's been used quite a bit over the decades and hasn't seemed to cause an issue since, so... Just keep using them, I guess. It's going to be more difficult to put this in than it was to get it out because now the cord is bending into a fresh section, whereas before it was bent in there for however many decades, so it was willing to kind of go in there a little bit easier, or he had its shape. I truly do hate these things. There's got to be a better, a better design than this. I, I never see anything else, but there's got to be. This is just these are terrible. I don't know how it's safe to be putting this much force on the cord all the time either. Alright, so now that's all the wiring taken care of. It's still a little bit flaky. I don't like the aluminium wiring in there, but we'll give it the benefit of a doubt and see how it works. If it appears to heat up at all, then I'll replace it. But I think it's much better to have the uh, to have the nuts there like that rather than those other things that were just insulated by nothing but tape. I don't think this wire should be touching that because it will just melt. And that's kind of how it was but it doesn't seem quite right. Maybe what I'll do is I'll secure it. I'll secure it on there, maybe. That would be a better way to do it than that. Because the back of this is going to get scalding hot. It's just going to melt the insulation. 
It looks like it just kind of, well, I guess it does kind of stay away from it. Well, maybe it's okay like that. Yeah, you know what it does? It does stay away from it. Okay. And yeah, my doubts about the safety of that, but whatever. Yeah, it's not touching anything. It's staying far away that it's not going to make any contact. That's kind of how it's sitting. So it's got it's got clearance. So we'll go with it. Now the throw of getting this to uh, screw back together. There's just there's two screws at the bottom. I thought there were six more screws. I mean, here's here's the other two. This could be kind of interesting to get this to line up nicely. That's nowhere near where it needs to be. This one, the rest should be semi into alignment. Somewhat, I would think. But they're not. The bottom one is is totally not in alignment. This one over here, I don't even see this one at all. <laughs> oh wow, that's like a quarter inch off. How am I supposed to... How are you supposed to bend that over? See that? Paul was nowhere near the thing. And you can't really bend it at all. Well, maybe if I, if I go this one, let's see if I get the other one to, to line up first. It doesn't bend anymore. And I, I could tell that was under a lot of tension when I took it off. Uh, this one, the screw was undone. It was definitely under a lot of tension then. Yeah, I've pushed it all the way over and it's not even close to where it needs to be. You have to remove the whole thing and try to bend it outside of the cage. off too. Oh, it's the same piece. It's got a... Alright, let's try that. 
I can kind of finagle the top ones a little bit easier. So as long as I get the bottom ones, I think that'll be good. Good enough to make it work. One of these screws is not responding to the magnetism of the driver. I don't know why. Oh, this one's way off now. It's so interesting to see a cheap product from like 50 years ago because there's still a lot of things about it that are very frustrating but at least it actually works good unlike the stuff of today which is just cheap and annoying and doesn't even work good all right so the element is now reattached I think uh, we, we should give it a test run now before I reassemble everything else Okay, here we go. The fan is running. Power draw is reasonable, 12.5 amps. Cage is not live. I think this puts out far more heat than that Lakewood heater does. This thing is cooking. And the fan's got a Good amount of airflow to it, too. It's not bad. All right, loading's working. Let's cut this off before it gets too hot to reassemble. Although it probably already is. Okay, so this has the that metal thing there within it. I think that can stay attached. And then there's these two little things up here, those two notches that those hooks go into. I think that's what the difficulty was originally, is I didn't know that. Oh, this obviously has to come off first. Hmm. Well, this is not made very well because you see the problem here is that the the notch for the um, control does not allow this to go up high enough for the clip to easily enter into the thing very dumb they cut a lot of corners on this unit Okay. 
what I want to see is will this power on while it's tilted back. In theory, I believe it shouldn't. It didn't. Okay, so the cutoff thing is working. And more importantly, let's try it like that. And it did not come on. If we tilt it back up, it comes on. Alright, so everything is working here now. I think this is going to go into the bathroom. This will be perfect when you step out of the shower. It's plenty hot. Oh, this is going to be great in the bathroom. See, it, it produces a pretty good amount of air, too. It's fairly powerful. It looks like the air would just come out in a little, like, half-inch space up there. Nice and quiet fan, too. Huh. Not bad. No, well, it's definitely a cheap product, and they took a lot of shortcuts in the design, but it performs. I'm kind of curious at what point does it actually cut off. cuts off right there you could hear it and there goes the fan it just stopped and it's back on again a very simple no frills no frustration safety measure but it's good enough to totally prevent uh, a fire if this accidentally tipped over another point I could see that could be very dangerous about this though if this housing gets hot which so far it's not but I'm sure it would over time and you, I mean, your, your hand is very likely to contact that as you turn it off and maybe it doesn't get hot over time it's not it's not I guess it's not in the past you know what it probably doesn't get hot I don't know we'll see anyways so this is fixed now and I think this may be the best heater I've ever used